All right. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Tuesday. It's a joy to be together. Um, remember to check out your name if you um, registered. If not, you can write your name on the on the paper. There's a basket, of course, for offering and for the used pencils. I want to make a, a couple of. Uh, that's too, too loud, Wes. <laughs> Um, there are uh, two gifts of flowers on the uh, in the altar area. The ones on the altar are given from Bob and Beth Sell this past Sunday for a celebration of their anniversary and their birthdays. And then the arrangement in front of the lectern is given by the Keel family in memory of Kyle, who, as you know, was tragically taken from us uh, two years ago on the 4th of July, and we also received them in memory of Esther, who passed away on an early Sunday morning. Uh, Esther Keel, her funeral <coughs> funeral will be here on Friday at 11 o'clock with visitation from 10 to 11. Um, and in case you don't know it, uh, there is, will be no fireman's picnic um, this summer. Um, and now I want to raise a question for you. I'm going to I'm going to offer a suggestion, and then I don't need you to raise your hands. I need you to tell me on your way out. We would like to move the Tuesday service from 12:30 to 10:30 throughout the rest of the summer because it's not so warm, and you know, later in the day. Please let me know if if, if that works for you. Uh, I don't want to upset, or you know, I don't want to exclude anyone. But I think it would be helpful if we could do that. And then this coming Sunday. Just for your information, we're receiving two new members in our church, Brian Robski, who is Donna and Jim's son, and Haley Collins, who is Lucas Schramm's uh, fiance. They're getting married uh, this fall, so they're joining our church. So if you see Brian and, and or Haley, just welcome them and uh, let them know how glad you are that they are here. Are there any other announcements? Please continue to remember the Keel family, obviously the Esther's family in your prayers. Kath, continue to pray for Kathy Lehman as she undergo, continues to undergo treatments. Kim Krieger, who is improving at home with pneumonia and recovering from coronavirus as well. Uh, so as, as the bell rings, let us pause, give our attention to the leading of the Holy Spirit as we worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin to God the Father, that we may receive his forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In his mercy, Almighty God has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the forgiveness of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, scatter the seed of your word in our hearts. Grant that it may be received in joy, 
sprout and bear the fruits of your mercy as we grow in faith, hope, and love. Then send us out into the world to scatter the seeds of your love through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from Isaiah 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial for an everlasting sign, sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from Romans 8. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you are put to death the deeds of your body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. You did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with Him, so that we may also be glorified with Him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you're able for the Gospel. The Gospel is written in the 13th chapter of St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart, that is, what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Brothers and 
Sisters, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I, I'm curious to know what you, what do you think when you, you walk into your living room or your bedroom or den or wherever and you, you see your, your Bible? Anyone here who does not have a Bible at home? What do you think when you see, or when you when you stand stand for the reading of the gospel, and you you know you're hearing the words of and the words about our Lord Jesus? There are, if you spend time reading the scripture, you know, it, as in the gospel lesson, this morning it says, "And Jesus spoke to them, and he said." Or if you go back to, if you go back even to Genesis. And, you, uh, and other books of the Old Testament, you hear, uh, you hear and you read that God said, our God is a God who, who speaks to us, who has spoken to us. In the, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and God said, let there be, and God said, and God said, and God said, and God made. Oftentimes in in the prophet, in the in the books of the prophets, you will hear, you will you will hear or read uh, often the statement which we shouldn't which we shouldn't just pass over lightly. And the word of the Lord came to the prophet, saying, or you read the words of that prophet where he says, "Hear the word of the Lord, what the Lord has said." This 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 book that we have is a record. Not just a history, but a record of the proclamation of God's word. Someone, someone's, a lot of someone's over thousands of years heard the Lord speaking. God spoke to that person, and eventually those words were transmitted, they were proclaimed. The prophet went out into the streets and said, Hear the word of the Lord. And for example, reading the book of Jeremiah, which is very, very complicated in terms of of its chronology now that but you you see that the process by which Jeremiah wrote down those words and he took them to the king and as he read them they were words of judgment and the king took a knife and he as they were read he was he would slice off the scroll slice off the scroll and then he threw them into the fire and I and Jeremiah was commanded to recreate those words, and it says he wrote down those words as well as many, many others. And his friend, his his friend and scribe Baruch, who is mentioned in there, was also instrumental in helping Jeremiah. God chooses chose human beings, and He used those human beings to re to record His word. Oh, there used to be years and years ago an idea, a doctrine of inspiration where, where it was believed that the writers of scripture like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Isaiah, Jeremiah, or whomever, were simply, were simply a, 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 like a, a robotic vehicle. That they were so overwhelmed that they lost their humanity and they, they like wrote almost unconsciously. Nobody really believes that anymore. Because we read the scriptures and we see the personalities of some of the writers. We see the similarities between Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But also we see the differences. We see how God uses imperfect human beings to, to, to proclaim, to transmit His perfect word. It's hard to imagine the church. It's hard to imagine the Christian life without the Bible, without the Word of God. I've talked to a number of you on the different times, and, and for those of you I haven't talked to about this, I bet you can you can come up with your own examples. Remember, especially if you were raised Lutheran, how, how much time your pastors spent in catechism with you memorizing Scripture, and how much, how much you probably disliked it. When I teach catechism, when I teach confirmation, 
our major textbook is Luther's small catechism, but we spend a lot of time in scripture because I want the kids to know the scriptures. And one of the first things they have to do is memorize the order of the books of the Bible. And you, you'd be surprised how many people go, how many kids, how many, how many kids uh, already know it, but some of them don't. I said, I, I want you to be able, if I say, turn to the book of to the book of Acts. I, I need you to I need you to turn to it. I don't want you to. That. But more than that, I want you. I want you to develop a love for God's word. There would be no there would be no church without the word of God. The word of God spoken, and, the, and through the church, the word of God written. There, you cannot imagine the Reformation without the Bible because it was the Holy Spirit speaking through the scriptures to Martin Luther. It wasn't Luther just struggling with something. He was struggling with the practices of his church and went back to the scriptures and there, he, there his eyes were open. And he, when he stood before the Council of Worms giving his defense and he says, my conscience is captive to the word of God. Can I, go, I cannot go against my conscience, which is captive to the word of God. And so every, every Christian denomination and every Christian church, whether it belongs to a denomination or is, is an independent church, has some sort of statement in their constitution or statement of faith about what they believe about scripture. For example, if you go to the NALC website and you look on the constitution and the statement of faith, it says, the North American Lutheran Church confesses the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and the gospel as the power of God for salvation, for the salvation of all who believe. Thirdly, the canonical scriptures of the Old and New Testament as the inspired word of God and the authoritative source and norm of the church's proclamation, its faith, and its life according to which all doctrines should and must be judged. We have that same statement in our church's constitution. We believe and affirm the Bible as the word of God. Now, it often bothers me sometimes when I, when I see how people treat the Bible as, as if they own, they own a Bible. So, they're in, they're in I, I, won't, I won't do this because I just simply can't bring myself to do it, but I saw a, a, a pastor on, on TV, a, a one, I mean, wonderful preacher. I, I listened to him a number of times. I think, I don't know if he's still on. I don't watch TV anymore, but he would, he would preach for his Bible and he would literally just have it by his side holding like, like, uh, can't do it, uh, like that. Seems to me, seems to me, that if you believe that this is the word of God, that you wouldn't, you wouldn't be so, at least for me, flippant. What do you think when you see the scripture? God said through the prophet, my word will not return to me empty, but shall accomplish that for which I sent him. For example, as this writer of Psalm 190, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. I have hidden your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. How are we to know what we're supposed to believe? How are we to know what we're what we are supposed to do? How we are to live? How are we supposed to know how we are to respond to to this issue or that issue? Sometimes the Bible doesn't address it. We have to wrestle with the scriptures and with our own faith humbly asking the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us. But we, as Christians, want to live in keeping with the Holy Scriptures. We're not all going to agree 100% on everything, but when, when a church takes a stance on something that is in complete violation of Holy Scripture, then there is a problem. And what happens to the church when it, what happens to the church when it says, well, you know, we, we use the Bible. We read it a few lessons on Sunday. But is this, 
it's outdated, it's an old book, you know, we're, we're, we move beyond this or that or the other. And really, when did God give you permission? When did God give us permission simply to ignore, ignore His Word? When I, when I became a Christian at the age of 14, um, I slowly but surely began to have an interest in, in, the, in the Bible, and the more I read, the more I wanted to know. And I would ask questions, and I, I was one of those, I was one of those teenagers who uh, pastor just drove pastors crazy. I say, I, pastor, what is this, what is what is this about? What does this mean? Was that? And you know, sometimes he would spend some. He say, you know what? He goes, it would take me way too long to answer. Why don't you come? Why don't you come over to the parsonage on whatever? We would sit and talk, and I developed passion to know the scriptures and spent college and seminary doing that. I and so I remember a few years ago sitting in the conference room at public school confirmation and, and one of the boys sitting at the very end we were talking about something and I he so the, somebody asked a question and I was saying I said I said turn in your Bibles to this passage. I gave him time to find it and we talked about it. And uh, we're doing, and I go, you know, that reminds me. That reminds me. Turn to, turn to Romans, whatever what passage we were going to. And after we read it, discussed it, one of the boys saying at the end, he raised his hand and he goes, Pastor, I, have a I go, yep. What is he goes? How do you know all this stuff? And I go, uh, well, it's kind of like my job to know this stuff. And I said, you're. You don't, you don't, you won't know it unless you read it. So I challenge, I challenge each of us every day to sit down and read the scriptures. Asking the Holy Spirit who inspired the writing of these words to open our hearts and minds so that as in Jesus' parable, God God can scatter the seed of His Word in our lives and, and we will be protected from the thorns and we will be protected from those things that would destroy the Word's growth in our life. Start, start with the Gospel of John. Read the letters of John. Read the, read the Psalms. Just start and read. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand and let's affirm the Christian faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we pray. Gathered together by the Holy Spirit, let us pray for those whose names were mentioned early, earlier, as well as names of those who are in the bulletin, and I'm sure there are some in your own heart and mind that you want to lift in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you have caused all Scripture to be written for our learning. Help us so to hear, read, learn and inwardly digest them that our hearts will hold firmly to the hope you have given to us in Jesus Christ. Let your word find good soil in our hearts where it will bear much fruit. Grant to us genuine humility and guard us against those things that would make us unreceptive to your word and useless to the work of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for those who have wandered from the faith and those who are lost. We pray for our nation, 
torn by violence and hatred. We pray for the families of the many people who have lost loved ones to violence, especially little children. And we ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit and bring comfort and salvation, hope and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Faithful and loving God, we thank you for you have called us to yourself and claimed us as your sons and daughters in Christ. And so we give you thanks for one another and pray for each other. We pray for our brothers and sisters at St. Peter's and Pastor Berkeley. We pray for the North American Lutheran Church, our Bishop Dan and our Dean, pray. We pray that you would strengthen us in your word, that you would use us for the proclamation of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear us and those who cry out to you. We pray for those who are ill and in pain. We pray for those who turn to you for forgiveness and for those who mourn, especially today, for Esther's family. We pray for those whose relationships are broken. We ask you, Lord, to restore, comfort, heal, forgive, and bless them and all who turn to you. Hear us, Lord, as we offer these and ourselves to you in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask all these things of you, Heavenly Father, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Almighty God, our Father. For you created all things by your powerful word and called life into being. When those whom you created in your image strayed from you, you remained faithful. You called Abraham and his descendants to be your holy people so that they would be a blessing to the world. And in your Son, Jesus Christ, you opened the way for all to come to know eternal life. And so we gladly thank you with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven as we lift our voices to sing the hymn of your unending praise. Holy, holy, holy. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, so that we may be transformed into his image 
and that this bread and wine may be for us the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus, who in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, drink from this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. This is the gift of God for his people. Christ our Lord invites you to his table. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Thank you.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you've given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, so that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as the candles are extinguished. Thanks be to God. 